And so to me, how to get there is to invest in plurality, in the ability to look at the diversity of the conflict, not just as explosion, but rather as fuel, to invent new strategy-proof games that people can play together to turn those conflicts into sources of co-creation so that whenever AI harm happens, immediately the society look at those needs, address those needs together, incorporate that into the pipeline of using AI, and then AI become just augmenting our collective intelligence because we, the people, are the true super intelligence. <music>
hey, it's a better bundle than ours. Let's just adopt it. So we become probably the only Occupy that year that resulted in a conclusive victory. So after that, we, the occupiers, the civic technologists, were tapped first as cabinet advisors and then as ministers uh, to rebuild the trust between citizens and government with the help of AI. So already by 2020, the approval rate is back at more than 70%, and we managed to overcome pandemic. That year, we lost only seven people to COVID, and we never locked down during the three years. Is that how they found you then? You were one of the technologists. Um, so you, you previously, you did not work for the government. Is that correct? Well, I never worked for the government. I always work with the government. Uh, and at uh, Lagrange Point, between social movement on one side and government on the other, Lagrange Point is a place between two celestial bodies so that I don't fall into the orbit of one gravity center or the other, but can play a bridging role between the people who demand justice, human rights, and so on, and people in the government who implement such policies. So what are some specific AI harms that you are seeing today? Um, I mean, you mentioned a couple, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, name, what are some other ones that, that people should be aware of? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Definitely. So we talk about uh, deepfake scams. We talk about malicious AI swarms that wants to basically win over trust so that you build a over-reliance on such systems. And there's also much more insidious harms. Uh, for example, uh, instead of spreading disinformation or misinformation, which on the content level, you can tell whether it's true or not. Uh, this, this is now per se. Uh, what's uh, more avant-garde now is what's called vibe attack or a social attack. So if you look at those uh, social media profile of those swarm bots, each of them look very real. They have a kind of life history interacting with people and they never post anything controversial. They just post something that they feel is a good vibe, is a bad vibe, and so on. But it creates a simulated reality so that instead of um, hell banning people, which is you post something and then nobody interacts with you, it's like heaven banning you. It surrounds you with something that flatters you, that's sycophant, uh, that um, you know, tickle your fancy. Uh, and then you become uh, much more um, self-reassured, uh, much more self-confident in holding those fringe ideas and by those vibe attack grounds. Gradually, they pivot you toward conspiracy theories and toward isolation from the rest of society. Hmm. So your work spans many worlds, including policy, activism, and open source technology development, to name a few. Can you share these communities and your unique perspective, inform your ideas around plurality as it relates to democratic technology. Definitely. So in many of the largest frontier labs, what they're working on is a vertical race. They're getting the AI so-called aligned to people like a loyal, flattering slave, I guess, <laughs> that uh, is under the control of one principal. Uh, and the idea is that they want to use such AI system to train a larger AI system that's loyal to the previous system. Uh, and then the even larger one is called the takeoff uh, until such a day where they can train the next generation without any human involvement. And it will become a what's called technological singularity. Uh, and so our vision is entirely different is a horizontal alignment. Instead of holding AI, kind of taking it as a slave to the previous human or AI, we want AI that fosters collaboration across diversity. We want AI that fosters mutual trust, mutual care between people, so that when we see something uh, that is harmful to a minority of people, instead of ignoring them, uh, we should include what's closest to the pain and their insights into the training of AI, so it no longer causes such harms. So such horizontal alignment is fundamentally, I think, a prerequisite if we're going to develop this kind of vertical takeoff, because otherwise this trajectory leaves everyone behind, whereas plurality or collaboration across diversity leaves no one behind. Are you consulting with other governments around the world? Definitely. So Taiwan at 23 million people is a kind of good enough mid-sized polity for developing such measures of deliberation uh, with AI. But now larger polities are taking notice. For example, I've been working with uh, Gavin Newsom and his first partner, Jennifer, in California for the past two years. So we launched together Engaged California, which again is a way for AI to look at people's ideas and thoughts and find the policy package 
that leaves everybody just slightly unhappy and nobody very unhappy. So it's a way to depolarize the society and move forward together. Initially, uh, we designed Engage California to engage with teenagers on the rule of social media in California because suddenly they did not vote in those legislators uh, that passed such measures or something about them without them. And initially, we wanted to consult first a statistically representative sample of teenagers and then their parents. But on the day of launch, the wildfire happened around Los Angeles. So we immediately pivoted and worked with people in Eaton and Palisade about the urgent need they have around uh, mental health support, around how quickly they can rebuild, around the existing regulations about rebuildings, the NIMBY and YIMBY, and how uh, you know the wildfire makes everybody like NIMBY, okay, maybe in my backyard if you only do this, uh, and so on. And so this system, again, using AI to synthesize people's ideas in real time, reflecting it back to the people to find this uncommon ground that people actually all agree with, that that leaves everybody just slightly unhappy, but nobody very unhappy. And so this is now a civic infrastructure in California. And we look forward to put in much more uh, examples of wicked problems in California to citizens' assemblies around the Engage California platform. What, what is the future of, of AI you envision? Mm. So, um, And what will it take to get there? <laughs> In 2016, when I first became digital minister in Taiwan, Taiwan did not have digital minister before. So I wrote my job description as a prayer, a poem, uh, to outline the Shu Wei future. Because in Mandarin in Taiwan, Shu Wei means both digital and plural. So I was also the minister for plurality. My job description goes like this. When we see the Internet of Things, let's make it an Internet of Beings. When we see virtual reality, Let's make it a shared reality. When we see machine learning, let's make it collaborative learning. When we see user experience, let's make it about human experience. Mm -hmm. And whenever we hear that a singularity is near, let's always remember the plurality is here. And so to me, how to get there is to invest in plurality in the ability to look at the diversity of the conflict, not just as explosion, but rather as fuel, to invent new strategy-proof games that people can play together to turn those conflicts into sources of co-creation so that whenever AI harm happens, immediately the society look at those needs, address those needs together, incorporate that into the pipeline of using AI, and then AI become just augmenting our collective intelligence because we, the people, are the true super intelligence. Any final words before you go um, that you'd like, to, you'd like to say to our audience? So um, next time uh, when you see a AI cost incident or AI cost harm, don't just adapt yourself to such systems. Don't give up your agency because AI to me is never about authoritarian intelligence that aligns the society to the logic of AI. AI is always assistive intelligence that should align its logic to the societal needs. And we are the experts in our own feelings and the society's needs. So don't inhibit those needs. Those needs are the North Star that AI should pivot and direct the development of AI.